sharing how I mix my paints when I do my bullet journal layouts. Hi everybody, thank you for joining me today. I'm so excited to finally be sharing with you how I do my paint mixing. Um, this is super basic, um, more, a little bit more basic than red plus blue equals purple, but <laughs> just super simple, um, focusing on using the supplies that you have, how to pick out the best supplies to get the effect that you want, and then mixing them together and creating a palette so that you get an idea of what your colors look like once you mix them up. So um, for me, I'm going to be using the um, Art Philosophy Gouache Premium. Now there are 18 colors. We're only gonna be using five to six and we'll get into that. Um, I also have the Strathmore watercolor block paper. I couldn't find my mixed media paper that I was looking for, but that's gonna be fine too. Watercolor is fine too. I was actually looking for the letter size, but we're gonna go with nine inches by 12 and a half inches. I might cut it down just so that I have something more similar to you. I will be using my Pigeon Letters Studio round brush in size six. Um, I am an affiliate for the Pigeon Letters and I feel super lucky enough that I'm able to get these. They're super nice, super easy to use. And then this is a ceramic paint palette that I got from Indigo up here in Canada. It's by Nota, or I guess it's called Chapters now, by Nota. And yeah, we're going to need a pencil and a ruler, some water, paper towel, and we're going to draw a grid um, on our watercolor paper. So let's get started. So I switched over to the Canson watercolor paper because the other one was a block. So I didn't want to start tearing that stuff apart. So that's what I'm using instead. Okay, so I cut my water paper down to size so that it's letter size. You don't have to do that. We're just focusing now on drawing grids on our paper. I'm making my grid just the size of my ruler to make it easier. Um, you can do one to two inches for your grid just so that you get a good amount of space so that you can see how your colors are interacting and working together. Now, a little bit of information on gouache. I realized picking gouache is a bit... So gouache will change colors if you... Uh, when it dries. So just because it goes down one color doesn't mean, or yeah, just because the color goes down a certain way, doesn't mean that's the color it's going to stay. As it dries, it'll change colors a little bit. So, um, but don't worry, in this video, you'll see it dry and you'll see the true color that the gouache becomes. The reason why I picked gouache is, it's honestly my favorite to use in a bullet journal. Um, it's not, it doesn't dry plastic like acrylic and it's not heavily dependent on water like watercolors are so it holds up a bit better in the notebooks and so that on its own is a win for me <laughs> um, and that's why I choose to use gouache and I also like that it's opaque and so you can right over top of it you can draw over top of it like I love it so we're gonna go red yellow blue and then up here we're gonna go red yellow blue black white and then a lot of the color palettes I choose tend to be a bit muddy. Now you can mix your paint until it gets muddy or you can just add brown, which is what I do. <laughs> a lot of sets, even if you're buying, I don't know, four or five sets or a set of six, um, will have the brown in it. If you don't have the brown, again, you can mix that up. I'm just showing you my process for how I work and get my colors going. So now when it comes to picking the colors you're going to mix, you want to pick 
paints that are, I'm going to use the word neutral. So um, for the yellows, we're actually going to choose this mid yellow. The lemon yellow I find is very bright and difficult to mix. So, or difficult to see what's going to come out of it. So we're going to use a mid yellow. I'm using my ultramarine blue. So although based on the label, this one looks a lot more red, we're actually going to go with the crimson because if you take a look at the crimson, it's a lot more red. The vermilion is going to be a bit more orange. So um, whatever set you're using to play with to, to do this exercise, definitely take a look at your colors, swatch them, see which ones are going to work best for you. These are the three that I will be going with. So we're going to start off with our red. Oh, this is my cat Millie. She loves painting. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start off with our red, or I guess in this case, crimson. And we're going to just put color down where it says red and red. Now, the other thing I like about gouache is that you can add more water to it to make it a bit more creamy, which can be super fun. Um, but that's for another video. So <laughs> now to our red, we're going to add some yellow. So the hardest part about this whole mixing process is mixing in the right amounts of paint. Um, so for the when we're, we're for this one we're going to make our base red and have it be more red and then when we do the yellow red we're going to add more yellow so there's our adding yellow to our red and here we're going to add more red to our yellow i hope that makes sense So it becomes a more yellowy orange versus a more ready orange. Then we're going to take some blue. And we're going to add some blue to our red. So we're going to do our reds, yellows and blues first. going to add some blue to our yellow and then yellow to our blue so like I said one of my favorite things about gouache is that if it starts running dry you can just add a little bit of water to it and you're good to go So as you can see, the gouache is starting to dry and what looked very dark at the beginning is now turning into this really beautiful purple. So there is your basic color mixing. So red, yellow, blue, and the colors that you get. Honestly, when I do my color mixing, I tend to stick to these. Um, I actually do stick to the basics. Um, Sometimes you can add a yellow or a green, oh sorry, <laughs> an orange or a green or a purple to a blue and, you know, start playing with colors like that. But I find playing with the colors in their truest form is a little bit easier to match what you're, what you want to get. Okay, so now we're going to get into black and white. So technically black is a shade and white is a tint. So logically, adding black is going to make it darker, adding white is going to make it lighter. So let's get our black and white. So I am using um, black, <laughs> black and titanium white. I was just about to say black is black, but not really. <laughs> there are different shades of black. Anybody who's worked with a black um, Crayola super tip. <laughs> That's not black, man. That is that is a weird gray. Like <laughs> that is 
a I don't know what it is it's not black but anyways I digress so when you're adding black you're gonna want to be super careful how much you add even just a tiny drop could be enough um, again you can always add but you can never take away so I'm just gonna keep adding until I'm happy with the shade so this is good That almost looks purple. Okay, we'll see what it looks like when it dries, but it looks almost identical to when we added the blue. So obviously there is more of a science to mixing color. So um, like 50 red, 50% red, 50% yellow exactly is going to get you like the perfect orange. 25% uh, red and 75% yellow is going to get you a more yellow orange. So yes, you can get, you can try and get super, super precise. And my type A personality is really upset that I'm not doing that for you here but it's also about experimenting and playing with your supplies and seeing what happens when you add the different colors together and just getting comfortable with it I mean technically you need to let go of your perfectionism when you're making art um, I know easier said than done like I said I'm struggling with that right now because I'm not getting I'm not getting this as perfect for you guys as I would like but again that's silly because you're did I use blue <laughs> that's why it looks the same because I use blue not black oh my goodness okay sorry guys <laughs> let's get some black going instead of the blue <laughs> And again, this is why I like wash, because we're just going to paint over that, because that's how life is. I was really confused why it was looking the same as the blue. And it's because it was blue. Okay, so we're just going to stick it in there. Stick a little bit. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So I might do two layers there, <laughs> just so that we don't see what's underneath it. I was super confused. Okay, as I was saying, there is an exact science to this, but we're not exact scientists, we're creative journalists. So we're just gonna do what we need to get by. Um, if you wanna take this to the next level, by all means, definitely look into this more and spend more time figuring it out if you need um, but truly like if this is enough for me I feel like I'm losing my mind why does this look blue no they're both black sorry guys So I obviously over-exaggerated the amount of black I put in there, and that's fine. So I'm not going to lie to you, this blue right here is my favorite blue. So there we have our shades and our tints. Now again, gouache is going to dry a little differently, so you'll see when this dries out more um, exactly how it's going to look. So now um, we're going to grab the brown and I'm going to show you how I play with my colors to kind of get them a bit muddier and match them. And then as a bonus, we're going to grab some washi and we're going to try and match the colors to the washi.
So the brown in my set is the Burnt Sienna, so that's what I'm going to be using. And then I'm just going to mix it into this so that you can see what happens when you add the brown. So as you can see, it's just a super easy way to get a slight color differential or differentiation without going too much into um, mixing five or six colors together. So by adding the brown, we get these rich jewel tones that I absolutely love. So those, let me clean this off. So that is the secret to my color mixing. Um, honestly, the brown. <laughs> the brown is the biggest secret to my color mixing. Um, but now you basically, if you've created this using your own supplies, that's excellent because you can see how your own supplies work and what you need to well get to where you want to go so um, as a bonus fun exercise I'm going to grab randomly grab some washi and we are going to try and color match to that washi using just these supplies and we're going to randomly draw some washi and we're gonna match color match it okay so this I believe is from Simply Gilded and we are going to color match to this okay so we have pink a, a super light pink, a darker pink, a dark green. Here we have a lighter green. We have some orange mixed in there. And so we are going to start color matching. So um, right away, the easiest colors will be the pink um, and then the darker green. So let's actually start with the pinks, okay? So we're gonna grab our red. Pop some red in there so with these pinks basically what we're looking at is just mixing in different amounts of white so that's actually pretty easy all things considered so I'm gonna take some white here and just a tiny bit of red see even that small tiny amount of red was still too much Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So as you can see, this pink is almost blue compared to the pink in the flower. So basically what that means is we need to warm it up. So one of the ways we can warm it up is by adding a warm color. So yellow is warm, so we can add a tiny bit of yellow and see what that does. Just a tiny bit of yellow just to warm it up a bit and as you can see we're basically there like we've matched the rose color now so we're going to take this and then just paint a swatch okay now that's great we have this now we just want to get this lighter pink so we're just going to take what we have dot it in there take a little bit of white here lighten it up and it's a little watery but that's pretty spot on so if we take a little bit more just mix it in there I would actually add a bit more white to get the background pink. So let's just do this actually. That's what I should have done in the first place. We're gonna stick this in the middle. If we want, we can warm that up just a little bit, I think. So take a little bit of yellow. The other way I like to warm colors up is by adding the brown. But in this case, we're doing pretty good here. Okay, 
Next up, since we have the red and the orange on the palette already, we can start, well sorry, the red and the yellow on the palette already. We're going to start trying to get those flowers in place. Or the, these, this orangey, goldy, yellow color. We can add the yellow and the red. So I would add more yellow than red. Um, possibly a little bit of the pink we've already mixed. Or, hear me out here, we're going to add brown to the yellow with some white. Because I think that's going to get that gold color that we're looking for over there. So let's grab the brown. So there we have that yellow star. So the best part about the washi that we're using is that there's so many different tones and shades and hues in there that we can get pretty close to getting at least one or two of the shades right. So that's pretty great and easy. And now we're going to get into the green. So we're going to add some blue to our palette. And I can tell right away what we're going to do is we're just going to add, we're going to create this dark teal green and we're just going to add white. So I'm going to put more white down as well. Honestly, white's probably the paint you're going to go through the fastest. <laughs> I messed up. <laughs> Green is yellow and blue, not red. Okay, don't mind me. Okay, so let's take our yellow, stick it in there. Now, because blue is such a stronger color than yellow, I tend to just add little bits of blue as I go. Kind of like the black. And then to get the lighter green, we're just going to pop some wine in there. Okay, so right away, this looks a little bit cold. Like this looks warmer. So we're just going to pop a tiny bit of yellow in there. And there we have color match to our washi. So super fun. Again, with gouache paints, you're going to want to be you're going to want to practice first so that you can see how the paint's drying. Once the paint's dry, you can sit back and say, okay, I need to add, make this warmer, I need to make this cooler. If you're going to be making colors cooler, you can do so by adding the blue, um, especially if it's a blue, yellow, or a blue, red mix. Um, if you want to make yellow cooler, you can add a little bit of white, a little bit of red, that's going to cool that down as well. Um, if you want to make a blue warmer, you're going to add the yellow or you're going to add a bit more red. <laughs> so it's really just trial and error and playing until you get what you want. And also just getting comfortable with your supplies and knowing your supplies. So I hope you did this exercise. Um, that way you have your color palette board ready so that when you sit down and you decide that you want to mix some paints together and play with your supplies, you have this for a reference. Like this is completely dry now. So you can see how the gouache has dried. Um, these are my favorite. I love them so much. <laughs> but these are your pure colors. This is with more red added, a little bit of yellow added to the red. This is a little bit of red added to the yellow. A little bit of blue added to, oh sorry, a little bit of red added to the blue and a little bit of blue added to the red. And that's how we went from there. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know down in the comments below if you are planning on using this. If you have used it, I'd love to see you tag me. So hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you in the next one.